Hello, and welcome to Bruise and Reviews, Episode 6. Today I'll be talking about Jerry Clower and the Tropic Hero from Revolution Brewing. I always, I always have trouble with this part. The key is you gotta use the side of your thumb. That way your nail is not pressed underneath the little pop top. But here we go. This is 7%, so this is a little, uh, a little higher octane than the beers that I have been drinking on this program in the past. Today's, uh, today's been one of those days, so it's probably going to be alright. Gotta stop making the squinty face when I drink. I'm going to try that again. Uh, there you go. So, uh, yeah, anyway, this seems like a pretty good IPA. I'm going to give it a 6. 6 for uh, Trop Hero. Anyway, now more importantly, on to Jerry Clower. Now, if you don't know who Jerry Clower is, Jerry Clower is an old-timey country comedian. He's something like maybe the Jeff Foxworthy of a prior era, though he himself, I think, would uh, liken himself more to Ray Stevens or Jerry Reed. Those were more who he viewed as his contemporaries, I would say. First, we'll give you some Jerry Clower biographical notes. He was born, of course, on Route 4, Liberty, Mississippi. After getting out of high school, he entered the Navy. He served during World War II. He played football after that for Mississippi State. And then he became a fertilizer salesman. And in the course of his fertilizer sales, he told these very uh, folksy and amusing stories in an effort to get people to buy more fertilizer. And he became so popular for doing this that eventually someone recorded him. Those got sent to a record agency, and the rest is history. He backed into show business, as, uh, as he expressed it. Now, you may be saying to yourself, Henry, I see you wearing the Chicago Blackhawks jersey. Yeah, you seem, uh, I seem to have more of a Yankee affect these days. How is it that you became such a fan of one Jerry Clower? Well, I'll tell you. Many years ago, or... How long was it? Eh, about 13 years ago, I guess I would say. I, uh, after college, like a lot of people, kind of washed up back at home in Alabama for a couple years. Well, for one year. And during that time, I mostly worked at the public library. And uh, that was exactly as exciting as you might think it was. But one of the more notable things that happened to me during that time period was um, I was style myself as a writer during those years and an old one of the old ladies who worked at the library was talking to me about oh well what kind of writing do you do and i said well i write these you know essay personal essays are supposed to be funny i guess and she said oh well jerry clower is really funny have you ever heard of jerry clower i said no i don't know, don't know who that is and the next day she brought in this jerry clower cd said, hey, you know, borrow this, listen to it, tell me what you think. And I took it home, and I listened to it, and it wasn't that it was one of the funniest things that I had ever heard, because it definitely wasn't. And the, along, along a lot of dimensions, the jokes are somewhat corny, certainly. But there was something about it that did pique my interest, and I, I continued to, uh, to explore the further reaches of the Jerry Clower universe as the years rolled on. As I've just said, Jerry Clower doesn't have a lot of jokes. He doesn't have a lot of, he does have setups and punchlines in a way, but they're not really very funny, but that's not the point. There are other things that are good about him. There is his voice, there's his storytelling ability. Many of his stories involve raccoons, by the way, and he, uh, he styled himself a raccoon tour if you will. There's what he looks like, too, is a big part of it. He's a big, fat guy with, like, a big butternut squash-type nose and a really big, expressive mouth and, uh, this kind of shock of white hair. And he has these tiny little twinkly eyes, which are also kind of a big part of it. There are also, of course, the people in his stories. There's Marcel Ledbetter. The entire Ledbetter clan. Uncle Versi ain't pet. The list goes on. Clovis. Don't forget Clovis. Also, in a more in a more general sense, and this is I think the most the most important thing about Jerry Clower, the reason that I the reason that I have gotten as into him as I have gotten over the years, is the world 
that is described in his stories is very interesting. I'm from a fairly rural area, um, but he was more of someone, someone of my grandparents' generation, and from an even more remote place, to the point where he makes a lot of references to things that just don't exist anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and does sound very folksy and interesting. And I've learned a lot about history and what it was, what it was like in the rural in the rural South, uh, two or three generations ago. I wanted to talk about some of the things that I've learned about by listening to Jerry Clower records. First of all, there's Clabber. Now, if you don't know what Clabber is, Clabber is uh, it's a, a bit like curds and whey. It's something kind of a, a dreg-like substance that results from milk being uh, pasteurized or turned into cream or something like that. Anyway, it's kind of like a weird proto-butter. Also, all these uh, weird things that I'm naming would make very good, like, goofy nicknames for, like, country or blues musicians for, like, you know, 70 or 80 years ago. Clabber Calhoun, I think, would be good to start off with. I would never have known about rat killings were it not for Jerry Clower. Rats, of course, uh, bane, of, bane to farmers from time immemorial. That is the bloody business of life on the farm sometimes. Just killing, killing those pests. It's them or you sometimes. Uh, so, Rat Killing Reynolds, I think, could be a good bass player or something. There's also Dog Bread. I didn't know about Dog Bread before I listened to Jerry Clower. Dog Bread is that when you're getting cornmeal ground up, it can be ground to a certain consistency for humans and then to a, another consistency for dogs. Dog Bread Dinkins, Dog Bread Dawkins. Eh, you know, there's a lot of ways you go with that. I've also learned the term abate of something, meaning a large amount of it, as in a bait of collard greens. I've learned that chitlins can be either stream dipped or stump whooped. And I've also learned about cutworm, which uh, again, like pests on the farm or something of a theme in these stories. And cutworm is something that can come and eat like collard greens or cabbage or something like that. And in fact, uh, preempting my joke a little bit, I actually, in, in one of Jerry Clower's records that I was just listening to. He actually mentions a guy named Cutworm Smith as though, like, that was that was the guy's nickname. I'm sure there was never a human being who was actually named Cutworm Smith, but it's kind of funny to think about. There are also two very distinct noises that Jerry Clower makes. I'm gonna do first one and then the other. The first one is hoo, and the second is haw. And I've tried, well, at least in the past 24 hours, I've been trying to suss out the distinctly nuanced differences in meaning between the two. And I haven't really been able to come up with anything. I think they are just both sort of general all-purpose exclamations. But this is uh, part of the thing you get with Jerry Clower. I will briefly mention a few negative points in regard to Jerry Clower. In terms of, you know, country comedy or southern southern oriented comedy you see some of the same negative features you see in southern culture generally there's a kind of dumb religiosity which permeates jerry flowers work and there is sometimes just a very very dim shadings of racism i know the jerry Clower track why can't johnny read he discusses the fact that the reason johnny can't read is because Johnny doesn't care whether he reads or whether he can read or not. And that because people living today, anybody living, this is like the 70s or the 80s, would uh, be better off than he was back in Mississippi growing up in the you know 30s or early 40s. Well, this seems to miss the point somewhat. The mere fact that technology has advanced, technology has, adva has advanced, and people have a bit more gadgetry now, eh, that doesn't really mean their lives are that much better. In terms of, uh, you know, race relations, he did do a Jerry Clower uh, rap at one point, so he does at least have that going for him. Check that out. There's lots of great dog names in Jerry Clower's story as well. There's Brummy, Trailer, and my favorite, Highball. I don't really like dogs, and so I'll probably never have one. 
But if I had a dog, I would probably name it Highball. To wrap up this discussion of Jerry Clower, I would like to share a story that I learned via one Shane Caldwell, the Alabama rehab guy. If you like Jerry Clower, look up Shane Caldwell, too. He's in the same vein, in a way. Shane Caldwell and Jerry Clower were acting together in a Ray Stevens movie. So, like, this was, this is basically all my, all my comedic heroes together. And anyway, in this scene, Shane Caldwell was going to be holding a picket sign and marching back and forth with the picket sign and eating a banana at the same time. And... While they were rehearsing the scene, just getting it blocked, you know, they they didn't want him to have to eat ten different bananas. So he was just kind of miming it, going back and forth. You know, didn't have didn't have a banana in his hand, didn't have the sign in his other hand. Uh, after they rehearsed it a few times, he's uh, has his back to the other actors, and he feel he feels Jerry Clower's hand on his shoulder, and Jerry Clower spun him around and said, "What are you doing?" Boy, it came to be revealed that Jerry Clower hadn't put together what the guy was doing and thought that he was pretending to be a retarded guy. What he had, his exact quote was, I thought he was playing a spastic. <laughs> oh, they'll write you letters on that, don't you know? It's, uh, it's disappointing in a way when you have a triangle of your heroes come together. And yet, it, and yet it doesn't all work out. And yet sometimes, that's, uh, that's just the way it is. You can have too much genius in the room. That's why I do this show by myself. Uh, almost forgot to give a rating for Jerry Clower. 8 out of 10, 2 points off for uh, cultural conservatism.